it's so hard to pick one. Like, you know, the, these guys are so, the, the whole thing, the, the whole hobby is so addictive in that there's so much variety and there's so, so many different reasons for enjoying different things. Um, so obviously tree monitors are close to my heart. Monitors in general, I love monitors. And, you know, perfect world Komodo would be like super cool. Welcome adventures. In this episode, I speak with Adeline Robinson from Adeline Robinson Art. I met Adeline at the North American Reptile Breeders Conference in Tinley. We discussed how she got her start, what she is up to currently, all the exotic pets she has owned, what are her favorites, and much, much more. Buckle up and join us. Do the music! Welcome, adventurers. It's another uh, Reptile Show reporter. Today, I have Adeline Robinson. Would you introduce yourself? Hi there. I'm Adeline. I do wildlife art, and I specialize in reptiles and amphibians. Did you actually change your name? Because I know you got married at the at the uh, uh, last Tinley show that I was at. Did you change your name? Are you still going by Robinson? Or legally, I am Adeline Robinson Billmeyer now. Um, we are keeping okay. the business name as Adeline Robinson Art, just because it's it's a little mm-hmm. bit easier to remember, and and that's kind of how our, our branding's been for the last three years. So that, that's staying the same. But yeah, Adeline Robinson Billmeyer is my my new name. Uh, how would you define yourself? Oh man, that's a pretty as a all around nature, wildlife, everything natural enthusiast. Um, my favorite things to do are herping, hiking. I've really enjoyed keeping animals. Um, my whole life has pretty much actually been revolving around animals and how to find them and checking them out and learning about them. So I just say that's pretty much like my, my number one thing. Everybody knows me as like the lady that keeps reptiles or, you know, that's taken in squirrels or rehabbed things too. <laughs> so uh, I'd say primarily that. <laughs> so how did you get started into the art thing? So I've been drawing quite a bit since I was little and I did a, quite a I did a lot of drawing in high school and took art classes and really enjoyed that. But I I would draw animals here and there. I would draw some dragons, draw horses as well. But I never actually saw it as something I could do in the future. I never thought about it as a career because there's this huge stigma against, you know, artists and starving artists and how difficult it can be. And so there was a lot of hesitation when it came to thinking about that for, for work. So I was fortunate in being able to get started in the animal industry at 14 years old. So I was working at pet stores, mom and pop shops, uh, wildlife centers, and I uh, was able to just really enjoy my time working. And I didn't actually get into artwork until I got out of the industry and started a job at a auction house where I was a graphic designer and my husband, is a, he was a photographer. So we were a photography graphic design team and we went out of state and the first six months working there were great but after that things started going downhill with uh I had I guess I would just say like the workplace environment just wasn't what we were expecting and it it wasn't healthy and what I would do is after work I'd get home at like eight o'clock and I started picking up drawing again so partially inspired by the Inktober challenges. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but it's a prompt list for every month of October that goes out and people will do this little challenge of one drawing a day. And I had no time for it. So I did a little one inch by one inch squares. I was like, I'm going to do a drawing, but I need to make it realistic. So I'm going to go tiny. So every day I was sharing these teeny tiny little one by one inch square drawings. And a friend commented, Hey, do you have an art page? And you know, my first thought was like, what do you mean? Do I have an art page? Like nobody wants to see that. I get, what do you mean? <laughs> and um, you know, I, I, I then decided, eh, why not? Let's, let's maybe just make all the drawings in one spot. And so after the Inktober challenge ended, I had some friends that were like, Hey, would you draw my snake for me? Would you draw my lizard? And after being in the industry for so long, I, I just had a lot of friends that had animals as well. And once they realized I was doing artwork of them, it kind of, It snowballed from there, and I was fortunate enough to get a lot of work after work. So I went from, you know, my regular nine to five and then late nights to once I'd get home, I'd work to like one or two in the morning on people's drawings or logos or different designs of their animals. So once I started doing enough of that, I was like, okay, I'd rather spend my days doing this than working for somebody else and then coming home and and drawing. So 
I, uh, I went full time with artwork in February of 2020. Wow. That spiraled up quickly. So how many years was that? <laughs> so, uh, we're going to be coming up on three years of being full time with the artwork, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it kind of exploded really quickly. And I honestly did not know what to expect. I thought that it was just going to be a little side thing that would be fun. And I didn't think it would be something that I would actually be able to do to sustain myself. And so once I got to that point, it was terrifying because I've always been employed. I've always had a boss. I've always worked for somebody and actually going out on my own. That was like one of the scariest things I've ever done, but one of the most rewarding things too. Yeah. You talk about all the different things that uh, people who get into the business by themselves to get into, like they have this imposter syndrome where how can I be that I'm not the person and, and I, how, it's not, I'm not good enough. And then they talk about the, the scariness of getting into doing it by yourself and being on your own mm -hmm. and not having somebody else. But then you get to a point where you're as popular as you are. And um, you just find that, you know, things will go are going well and, uh, and do, and you just keep going. So uh, that's great that you were able to get through all those hurdles. Cause those are big hurdles to get through. You know, the, the, uh, mm -hmm. am I really good enough? Do people really believe in me like this? And can I go on on my own? Will I survive? Will, you know, what, will people just stop liking my art? What media do you use? So primarily Copic markers and pens are my, my number one thing that I'm kind of known for. So they're a finer alcohol based marker from Japan and they're, they're super fun. They're refillable. And so I, I have a lot of refills and I have just a ton of markers. So that's been a really fun medium that I've enjoyed a lot. Um, I, a way I can kind of describe it to folks that are like markers, what do you mean? And they picture like the, the Sharpies or something. Um, it almost lays down <laughs> similar to like a watercolor where it's very light and very transparent. And so it's really easy to layer up from there. So that's primarily what I use. I do do some acrylic painting too, and I'm hoping to get back into painting again, because it's kind of been a while since I've done a lot of painting. So that's something that I'm hoping to continue to learn about and continue to, to grow with. So yeah, Copics and acrylic markers. So how did you learn about these? Did you take any formal classes? Uh, outside of high school classes, I, haven't really taken any traditional art classes. Um, I took some college courses on digital painting, which were awesome for giving me the, the tools and the, the know-how for the, for the software. But for the most part, I'm primarily self-taught. That's incredible as well. What, what are the subjects? Do you just do reptiles? Do you just do any animal? Uh, we do people. What, what, do you, what do you like to do? Primarily specialize in reptiles and amphibians because that's what I've worked with the most. But I've also spent a lot of time working mm -hmm. with birds. A lot of people don't actually know that I used to hand feed and raise parrots and all kinds of kinds of really cool birds. So I'd love to do more bird art. Um, I'm an avid equestrian. I've been riding since I was a, a little kid. I have a horse. And horses are actually what I've been drawing the longest out of everything. So I would definitely love to get back to doing, you know, aquatics, birds, some equine stuff too, as well as the reptile and amphibian. But I think part of what makes the reptile and amphibian art so special is there's such a huge variety of species where you've got different colors, patterns, textures, mm -hmm. you know, completely different shaped animals that are just insane. And they don't really get a whole lot of uh, attention. And so that's something that I'd really like to bring more to them. Um, you know, there's just so many crazy cool species that, that look super goofy or look interesting. And I'll do drawings of them. And, and some people don't even know that that's an animal that exists. And so that's part of why I get super excited about drawing reptiles because it's an animal that I'm, you know, mind boggled by and I want to be able to share that with some other folks mm -hmm. too. So, um, yeah, that's why they're, they're pretty close to my heart. Most of your item, if not all of it looks very realistic. I think I got 10 different, uh, 11 by 17s when I was at uh, mm -hmm. Tinley last year. It's uh, great for me to have. And I, I actually exchange them. I have a spot where I put them on my wall and I exchange them so that I can keep going for the different ones. But. I appreciate the sport. Thank you. What was your first exotic pet? First would be, there's almost two different answers for it. So I grew up in a household full of animals, including reptiles. So it's, it's funny. I almost feel like that's not, not fairly normal. Um, so my parents would tell me stories of, you know, the reticulated python they used to have. And my dad always had boas and ball pythons and we had all kinds of animals at home. So um, the first animal I think that like went into my room was a bearded dragon. And, you know, he was great, super fun. And the first snake that I kind of got myself 
for my birthday, I guess, was a corn snake. So it's kind of a, a double whammy, two critters that I got. Um, so yeah, it's either it's either bearded dragon or corn snake, but there were there were awesome starting starting animals to get into the hobby. Yeah, those are two of the uh, best starting animals. Uh, the bearded mm-hmm. dragon, the leopard gecko, and the corn snake are are some of the the best. So your parents pick wisely. What do you keep now? So I am head over heels in love with tree mongers. They are something that I've fallen fallen in love with very quickly. Uh, I've been keeping tree monitors for several years now. I currently, um, I had to downsize because of the amount of shows we were doing and moving and not quite having the space that I used to. Um, it was pretty difficult because I used to have a pretty large collection, but I wanted to focus on quality versus quantity, especially with the limited amount of time I have with traveling. So I've got a pair of uh, black tree monitors and blue tree monitors, and then I also breed red striped gargoyle geckos at home. So it's 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 pretty small now. It's funny because it's it takes me like no time to do the animals, <laughs> uh, where it used to take you know hours trying to pe- prep food and get everybody fed and misted and watered. So it's it's pretty quick now. But you know I I enjoy being able to dedicate extra time to them where before it was just maintenance thing. You know, so I think everyone in the hobby is doing the same thing though. They're all talking about having small collections and doing bigger stuff and more stuff with them, having an easier time and enjoying the, the animals more than breeding it. And so I think that's kind of the way, you know, some, obviously some people are, are doing whole lots of them and breeding and, and having a huge um, setup, but uh, more people, it seems are kind of downsizing. I have a few, but I have more than I probably need to have. And, but I just, I don't want to get rid of any of them. So um, I was breeding all kinds of chameleons and, and I was not selling them. I breed them and, I'd, and, they'd, and they'd have babies. And then I just put them in cages and keep them because selling is boring and not, and not exciting is keeping them. And I, and I didn't want them to grow up and not see what they look like and yeah. worry about someone else having them. So that's why I got into this whole reptile show reporter thing, because I needed to stop buying reptiles. I needed to look through, live through everyone else as I got from show to show. I really enjoy it. But It's funny that you mentioned that you, you started it because of that you know i started actually collecting artwork to keep myself from buying more animals at shows too so it's just kind of funny how sometimes you get to that point and then you you end up starting something new to keep keep you from doing that and then that turns into a a whole passion as well the problem was that when i went to tinley last year it was my first time to tinley i was like blown away by the number of things and all the things you could own and all the unusual things because most shows have ball pythons and Mm -hmm. geckos and what have you but this the show had I could not. I, I was like, I need to go home with only one thing. And I was like, I could not decide. I finally, on the last day on Sunday, went in early because I had a VIP pass. And the one frill dragon, the Australian frill dragon that I had never had a chance to see, um, the guy was there. And it was, and no one was his booth. And he's like, oh, do you want to see it? I'll take it out. And he took it out and he put it on my hand and it just sat there. And it was, you know, it was from Australia. I had only had New Guinea. And I'm just like, I, I had a list of three different things that I was going to buy. And it wasn't on the list. It was, mm-hmm. uh, I got away with only one. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do this year. Um, I'm going to go to the show again this year. I'm going to have to pick one thing. And I'm, what do you like about shows? What is your favorite thing about shows? What, what, is your, what would your favorite show be? Truthfully, the, the people. Um, to be honest, when you start hitting mm-hmm. up, a circuit, you see a, a lot of similarities, just like you were saying, you see, you know, kind of the ball mm-hmm. pythons, the crested geckos, a lot of the, the pet animals, which is how, it, you know, how a show should be, you know, you want entry level animals when you mm-hmm. go to a show as a family that's just starting out, that's, that's good to have. Um, so, you know, you, you get a little bit used to that, but I, I would say the people and being able to catch up with people that, you know, I, I haven't seen in a year or see twice a year or something, and uh, hearing about their projects, things they're interested in, and their passions, or the you know some vendor, vendors will bring special projects that they've been working on to the show, and um, that's that's a lot of fun for me. I, I love going herping too, and so sometimes when we're out of state, we'll get together with some local folks or you know folks that are that are we're all out there together, and so we'll try to go herping in the local area to to check it out and see what's out there. So it's it's a really good time. I I really enjoy chatting with everybody and catching up and. Um, it's almost like a, a little reunion, you know, at every show. So that's, I would say one of my favorite parts of it. How would you make the perfect show or how would you describe the perfect show for you? 
I feel like that was Tinley. <laughs> this last one for me. <laughs> I mean, Tinley is an incredible show, but she got married at this show, so yeah. So it was a, it was a pretty big, pretty big top one. head. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I would say, um, Tinley's the show that I've been going to the longest. So it was actually what a, a first show that I've ever been to. So I've been going to that one for a very long time. And the amount of relationships that I've made there and the amount of camaraderie there is between vendors and, and breeders and attendees even, you know, you've got your regular attendees that come in and check everything out too. Um, there's a good variety of species there too. It's not all the same stuff. It's always fun to, um, you know, I'll always ask if I can't get out of my booth, like, hey, you know, any tree monitors out there? Or like, how, how are the monitors out there, you know? anything unusual and usually there's there's something at least several really cool things to um to learn about or to um to go check out at the show so it's it's a really good time it's a whole whole weekend of it um the only way i think it could be any better is like if it were maybe warmer <laughs> during the show and uh there's some more some more herping nearby that that would probably make it ideal but i mean it's a great show for vendors for attendees it's i feel like all around one of my one of my favorites um, so yeah, I would say probably that one. And yeah, the only way I can think of making it better is, is, you know, having it when it's warm out. Besides tree miners, what is your favorite exotic reptile? Or if you could have any exotic reptile, what, whether it's legal or not, or whatever, what would you pick? Can I do multiples? <laughs> Cause there's several. And sure. You know what? Almost everybody does multiples. It's so hard to pick one. Like, you know, the, these guys are so, the, the whole thing, the, the whole hobby is so addictive in that there's so much variety and there's so, so many different reasons for enjoying different things. Um, so obviously tree monitors are close to my heart. Monitors in general, I love monitors. And, you know, perfect world Komodo would be like super cool. Um, I'm also super fond of lace monitors and croc monitors. I think they're amazing. I know you know, I won't really ever have the, the time or space for them. So it's not really something I ever intend on keeping. But one of the wonderful things about meeting people and making friendships and traveling is I get to go see people's collections. So I've been able to spend some cool time with, you know, other folks' animals and hang out and check them out without having to worry about the day-to-day the -day maintenance and making sure they, they've got everything they need. Um, so I would definitely say, you know, Komodos, laces, uh, crocs. Um, I'm huge into crocodilians as well. I really enjoy just learning as much as I can about them. And I think they're super fun. Um, and then one of my favorite things to draw, and I don't know if people have noticed this, is I love drawing arboreal vipers. I don't know what it is, or I guess... I do know what it is. I do know why I love them so much, but they're just super fun to look at. They're keeled scales, their patterns, the shape of their heads. Some of them have these like blocky heads and others have these, you know, slender faces. And it's just super cool to, to see the variety that they have. And they, they just look neat. They look like little, little dragons, I guess. So, you know, in a perfect world, I'd probably have some setups that, you know, are fully planted and have some little arboreal vipers in there and, you know, have a little waterfall feature or something as a, as a cool display animal, maybe someday. Okay. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I couldn't even like come up with, if you tell, ask me what my favorite chameleon is, I could probably come up with four. So it's, you know, yeah. I have to list those but, and that's just one of them. I mean, I've always had um, a iguana since like 30 something years ago when they were popular first, I've always had one. I get them from the rescues now because mm -hmm. there so many people don't know how big they're going to get. They get their, it's a tiny oh, little iguana right, yeah. and then they take it home and, and then it gets to be four or five feet. So I still have mm -hmm. a couple right now, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think I could actually name a, you know, and a Komodo dragon would be awesome. I don't know if I would what? be smart <laughs> enough not to get eaten. What is your current passion? Is there something you're trying to get to? Is there a level you're trying to get at? Or what is your current goal? Actually, yes. <laughs> yes to all of it. So I'm currently in the process of, I've, I've got a studio that I've just moved into. I'm still not entirely um, fully finished with setting up. And so I've got a whole kind of a warehouse section on one end of it. And then I've got my art creating section on the other side. So I'm currently working with Chris on getting that all finished up and getting, getting a big table so that way I can back and sleeve prints and getting things set up so that way it's easy to be able to prep for shows, to be able to do what we need. 
uh, previously we were living, or not previously, we're still living in um, a fairly small living space and the living room was turned into a warehouse. So we didn't exactly have space to have people over or to really, <laughs> really be able to do much outside of just working. So now that I've been able to move everything here, I'm pretty excited to, to have the space that I need to continue to expand, to be able to, you know, potentially carry new products or new merchandise and work on big paintings is something I'm super excited about. So mm -hmm. the big paintings I've worked on in the past, they took up like half of the room when I was in there. And so I didn't really have a whole lot of, a whole lot of elbow room. I had my, my animals on one side and my, my drawing desk on the other. And, uh, you know, now I've got the space to be able to branch out, do big pieces, do high detail pieces that I want to. So I'm, I'm excited about that and uh, working on a Patreon. Slowly working on uh, getting everything ready for that and um, creating some, some fun, fun new pieces. There's been a lot that's been in my head for the last three years that I'm excited to be able to actually start creating and start sharing and, and start sharing the process with folks too. Well, how do you decide what to, to draw? There's a couple different ways I go about it. So I'm hoping moving forward, it's been a, a, a very difficult balance in being able to do any of the personal work that I've been wanting to. So usually I kind of go off of popular demand because of the shows. So the first shows I went to, I didn't have any ball pythons. I didn't have any crested gecko art. Like I didn't have any art of the animals that are commonly kept as pets. So people would go there and they'd be like, well, I have this animal at home. You know, do you have any artwork of it? And it was something that I hadn't really thought about because I was drawing things that I really enjoyed that were weird niche species that nobody really knows about. So once I started creating more commonly kept pets, I kept creating commonly kept pets, uh, which is awesome because I want people to be able to check out my work, say, hey, I've got, you know, a jungle carpet python at home. And I love hearing when people you know, see a, a piece of artwork and it looks like their pet at home and they're so excited about it uh, that they take a photo of their, their critter with it. And it, it makes me so happy to be able to see that. Um, so that's kind of been my main focus, but I'm hoping to, to be able to kind of do a little bit of a 50-50 where I'm continuing to do fun new species that people are looking for, uh, but at the same time working on maybe some more obscure stuff that I'm more into as well and help teach people about it. So I'm hoping uh, to be able to make a really good balance of that this year. So essentially, you already answered all the questions I had. Um, uh, what do you do otherwise? What what do you, what what do you do for fun? What do you what do you like to do? I so, guess go herping, but besides that, yeah, well, going herping is a big one. Uh, riding my horse is a, a pretty big thing. So I'm hoping to to be able to do some mm -hmm. more endurance rides with her this year. Uh, but hitting the trails with her. And uh, I actually started a group on Facebook called mm -hmm. Herpers on Horseback because the endurance ride, if for people that aren't familiar, it's like a marathon, like a cross country marathon for a horse and rider. And so there's people out West that, wow. you know, are going through mountains and perfect habitat and they're sharing photos of the rattlesnakes that they're seeing. And it's awesome because I feel like there's been such a shift in appreciating wildlife and appreciating nature, not the, you know, every snake well, the only good snake's a dead snake kind of a thing. So after seeing quite a bit of the endurance groups, having people share their snakes and turtles and tortoises or alligators that people are coming across while they're riding, I made a little group specifically for it. So it's, it's kind of fun. There's a lot of crossover there. Um, so yeah, horses, herping, reptiles. Uh, I play D&D &D with my friends as well. So that's that's been pretty fun. And uh, hoping to get back into reading again. And I just, I enjoy being outside, you know, hiking, Anytime I can get out cycling, haven't been kayaking in a while, but that was always a lot of fun. So try to be outside as much as I can. Okay, but you chose the Midwest as a place to be, so it's you know it's it's great weather a couple months out of the year, but yeah. but we struggle. I'm in Ohio, yeah, sure. so uh, I struggle with the same kind of weather. So uh, how do people reach you if they want to? find out more about it and where do they see your art at and how can they reach if they want to commission something? Uh, so my website is AdelineRobinsonArt.com. If you look up Adeline Robinson Art on Instagram or Facebook, the my page should be able to pop up as well. So I do have a web store and a website mm -hmm. where I've got apparel and I've got prints and stickers and coloring books and all kinds of fun stuff online. So that's kind of the primary way to, to check out my work. I also have commission information and pricing on there as well. 
and uh, my email if anybody has any questions or, uh, you know, is looking to have it. Anything else you want to tell the adventures about yourself? I look forward to seeing folks at shows. I'm always just super excited. So hopefully I can, can see some of these, these viewers here and see you guys at one of the shows one of these days. I do have all the shows that I'm going to posted uh, as my pinned post on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I just realized I need to update the dates on my website. So I'll be going to all those shows. Hopefully they're, they're local. I'd love to meet some of you folks. And, um, you know, for folks that are getting into artwork or wanting to learn and think they're not good enough, that's not true. <laughs> I hear so many people tell me that, you know, they started drawing, but they got frustrated and they're not good at drawing. And so they just give up. You know, I can't even draw a stick figure is one of the most frequent things that I hear at the shows. And, um, you know, they, there's ways of learning and sitting down and working with people's individual methods. There, there are ways to learn and to practice, and it's not something that you'll get good at overnight. And speaking from experience, as a person who started from scratch drawing, you know, I, I may be drawing more consistently than a lot of people, but at the, the end of the day, we all start somewhere. And the best way to continue growing and getting better is when you find that, that piece that you're working on and you're not happy with it, you learn from it and you apply it to the next one. So that's how you keep getting better. And, uh, you know, I just hear so many people that get discouraged and they, they just stop. But if you, if you learn from it and don't let it get you down mentally, you can keep going. So I, I always encourage people to, to keep doing what they're enjoying and, and keep up at it. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me and our ventures. I do appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been great chatting. If you enjoyed this adventure and want to be alerted when more are available, please click the subscribe and maybe even the bell button. Thank you.